From the journey of life to a hope and a future, our God calls us to a life grounded in faith. We join together in worship and praise to show love and faith for a true and faithful God. So friends, let us rejoice today in the God of our hope and our salvation. We do rejoice in you, O God, for all that you have done, all that you are, and all that you have promised. So let us worship together now in praise and thanksgiving. Amen. Stay seated, if you will, because we're going to sing together a lovely song of thanks. Stay seated. Stay standing, if you will. You could even try standing. I mean, you know, we're going to sing, Now thank we all our God, with hearts and hands and voices, whose wondrous things have done, in whom this world rejoices, even though we may not always feel this. This is our reality, that God stands with us, and today we thank you. Thanks, Bill. Australia. A little bit foggy, but it's all good. 
it's all good. Well, a special welcome this morning back to Alan. Good to see your recovery. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 I want to special welcome to the lovely Sue, who is leading us today. I'm sure she'll do a wonderful job with this one. All right, people, this month's pantry item is still 10 vegetables, which is lovely. And I see tomorrow, the triple that tea, the nifty Neville Nature Tours are going to walk about tomorrow. So it's going to be an amazing trip for the people involved. So have a lovely time tomorrow, the triple that tea tours. Don't forget to after the meeting, grab a newsletter and enjoy your meeting. Good morning everybody. I draw your attention to the prayer table as usual. Um, my focus for this week is still praying for others as we have been the last few weeks. So there are cards and notes that you can write to let somebody else know that you're praying for them. So the week for this week from the Salvation Army is talking about being devoted to God and we are asked to think about our devotion to God and where maybe we could be more devoted to Him, what, what might need to change so that we can be devoted to Him. So I encourage you to use the prayer table. It's here during the meeting and out in the foyer during the week. So pray about your devotion to God and then maybe take time to write a note to someone else to encourage them in their walk and their devotion to God too. God bless you.
morning's Bible reading is from the book of Luke 17, verses 11 through 19, from the New International Version. Jesus heals ten men with leprosy. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus travelled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. Today we're talking about pre-meal prayer. Very confusing subject. A lot of people don't know when to pray, what to pray for, how to pray, who prays. Hey, you want me to check right? You want to we pray? I don't know. If, all very confusing. We're going to cover it all today. Let's get started. Chips and salsa. Sometimes they bring it to the table before you're even seated. There's no need to pray for that. Lots of people wonder about appetizers. Do you pray for them? Do you not pray for them? No prayer is necessary for an appetizer if you have entrees coming out later. Salad. That is the most confusing thing on the prayer continuum. If it's a side salad or an appetizer salad, no need for prayer there. Now, if it's a main course salad or you're bringing it out with the rest of everyone else's meal, that then is going to require some kind of prayer. But I put that kind of in a separate category. For the most part, when you're thinking about salads, just remember this. If it requires dressing, it doesn't require a blessing. Do I pray for a coffee? No. Are you a psychopath? No one wants to be next to the person at Starbucks that's praying over a latte. You weirdo. Soup. Do you pray for soup? Do not pray for soups. Only bowl-related soups. Anything smaller than that is always off the hook. I like to say, if it comes in a cup, no need to lift up. Everyone knows if you order a hamburger, that's going to require prayer. But if you order sliders, that does not require prayer. It's a little glitch in the system a lot of people are not aware of. Potato skins, no prayer. Baked potato, prayer. Ask any Bible-believing Christian, they're going to have a different policy on fries. Some say never eat the fries. Some say eat as many as you want. Here's the policy on fries. Up to three fries is acceptable to eat prior to the prayer. That brings us to dessert. Always a very confusing situation. A lot of times people go out to a show, go to a movie. Hey, should we grab some dessert afterward? Yeah, let me get the creme brulee. I love cheese. Hey, uh, you don't need to pray for that because you already prayed for your meal earlier in the night. Do you hold hands before you pray? That depends on your situation. If it's a personal family gathering, some close-knit Bible study of some sort, sure, a hold hand wouldn't be uncomfortable. Now, if you're on a Tinder date, that might throw off the news. Most of the confusion surrounding pre-meal prayer comes from when to actually pray. Let me just say, on behalf of waiters, all over the world. Please pray when your waiter is not there. There's nothing worse than a waiter coming out with two full arms of the humans and you're over there mid-prayer at Jabez. Like, what are you doing? Last but certainly not least, who at the table volunteers to lead the prayer? Lots of people say the man should lead the prayer. Why is that? I'm not sure. It's 2018. Maybe we should get that rule adjusted at some point in the near future. A lot of people operate under the most spiritual person at the table. They're going to be the one that should pray because that prayer is going to be the most powerful and effective. So you got obviously a pastor, a missionary, even a Christian logger of some sort. Should even a volunteer youth pastor. That prayer is going to be a little less effective, but it's still going to qualify. If you're just the average person sitting at the table with obviously more spiritual people around you, you're kind of off the hook because I feel like God would be like, hey, how come you only bless this meal? You'd be like, I don't know. Ask the pastor. He works for you. <laughs> story of ten 
and then the story of one. So a quick recap, 10 men ostracized from the community. They call out to Jesus for mercy. And although it seems that Jesus doesn't take too much notice of them, he sees them and he replies, go show yourselves to the priest. Now it's just a throwaway line, right? Go and show yourselves to the priest. And what happens? They turn and go, and they're healed of the disease which we now know as leprosy. Now this disease, of course, meant that they could not take part in community. They couldn't live as you and I do. They were shut away, not to be seen or heard. But the scripture goes on to tell us about the one who was the outsider of the outsiders, if you like, because Luke makes a special point in telling us that this man was a Samaritan. He was one of the hated ones, the outsiders. This one man turns back, falling onto his knees before Jesus and thanks him. Jesus sees this act of worship and gratitude and sends the man on his way again with these words. Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. Let's have a little look at a visual of that um, story. So there they are, the ten, and the one bowing low. Only that one returns, the others return to the priest. Stand up and go, your faith has made you well. Now there's a couple of things to note here already as we're just getting started, is that the nine did nothing wrong. In fact, they did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They obeyed the order to go and show themselves to the priest. And in the going, they were made well. This man does that as well. But he returns, and he's given perhaps an, another kind of blessing, an extra blessing, if you like. Because Jesus again says to him, your faith has made you well. So is this man getting a double bout of healing? Was his condition much worse than the others? We do not know. What is going on here for well, Jesus to heal these ten men once, but to heal one of them twice. Now, I'm no scholar, but there's a couple of Greek words that appear in our English translation to be the same. Thanks, Angie. And the word is healing, and it's translated this way in English as healing, but there are two Greek words for this same word. Now, I think it's Iome and Sozo. Iome, this is one way of healing. Instantane instantaneous, miraculous healing. That's what's taken place in round one of this healing story. Sozo, translated, means salvation. Restoration of spirit, soul and body. Most English translations, as I've said, give the same word for both. The word healing. <coughs> so EMA, healing, instantaneous, miraculous, is used in verse 15. And in verse 19, the word so-so is used. Verse 19. Then Jesus said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. I think that healing happens for many people on a whole, on lots of levels. Sometimes it doesn't happen. I mean, that's a whole different conversation. What we often fail to realise is that most of us are healed 
each and every day, we just don't notice it. Not only in the sense that, gosh, wasn't it great that I woke up this morning, but in the sense of surviving every day. But further for us, as the people of God, we are healed every day in the spiritual sense by receiving God's grace when he extends that to us. All the ten in this story enjoyed the benefit of their encounter with Jesus by, by being healed, but not all enjoyed the benefit of their encounter with Jesus by being granted salvation. One man, the one, who returned to give thanks, was granted by Jesus a step beyond healing. Not only was he cured of his disease, but he was made well in body, mind, and soul. Now, this man, I wonder about him. I wonder about his gratefulness, his spirit of thankfulness. Did his parents teach him these manners? Was he part of a family that was generous and lived an attitude of gratitude? Was he born with that already in his spirit, his spirit of thankfulness? Was he made to say thank you when handed something? Was he made to say by his parent, made to by his parents, write little notes to the family member who had given a gift? Was that a part of his experience? Why did he return? And how can I be like him? What would need to change for me to do that? What would I need to change about myself? What would you need to change to live this way consistently? What would you need to change about yourself? We're going to explore, explore this a little further, a bit later. But firstly, with the spirit of thankfulness, we're going to take up the offering together. Now, thank you for playing this lovely song for us as part of our worship and giving this morning. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. We're going to take up the offering and afterwards we're going to come back and we'll sing this chorus through together. Let's give to our Lord and Lord.
to her father we thank you for all that you give to us lord and as we've given back up uh, just a portion of what you have given us we would ask that you would bless that multiply it for your extension of your kingdom in this place and for, for, for bringing others to know you lord we've given the greatest gift the gift of your spirit to come and dwell within us we have a mandate, Lord, to share that spirit with others. And I pray as we move from this place today that we would not hoard your spirit within us, that we would share it with others. Lord, we are so grateful because we, we, we know that you live in us and that we want to share what you have done for us in our lives. So Lord, be with us as we continue to worship here this morning. We ask it in your name. Amen.
this is the sweetest name we know. Now, um, Nat and I had a little bit of fun over the week when uh, we were putting the meeting lead together. And unbeknownst to me, she popped in a song that we'd sung last week. And I thought, oh, that's a lovely song. That'll go really well. She realised, she left the song in. We all got a new copy of the meeting lead. And I said, no, 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 I love that song. Can we get it? So I think we're on version three now. But you did sing last week that beautiful song, Great Is Thy Faithfulness, O Lord to Me. We're going to sing it again this morning. I hope that's all right with you. If you would like to stand, if you're able to stand, please do so. And we'll sing this lovely song straight through. Thanks, God.
know about the number 10? We use the number 10 in any ways that you can think of this morning. Every day. Okay. Big on oh, money. <laughs> right. Oh, can you let me 10 cents? No, it's not that right. Yep. Yes, zero to ten every day. Give me a score out of ten. Right. No, don't, no, don't do that. That wasn't a real question. We'll do it later. Do it nicely. Do it. Oh, they're a ten out of ten, or he's a ten out of ten, or she's a ten out of ten. Oh, you got ten out of ten. Right. Ten, the number ten, is also quite a symbolic number. In the scriptures. In Genesis we read, and God said ten times. And usually what did God say? And it was good. Yeah, right? There were ten generations from the time of creation to the flood, Noah's flood. God gave Moses ten commandments. And ten, giving a tenth of what we've been blessed with is a biblical principle for giving. And it's what we call today a tithe. A tithe is a tenth of what the people of God give back to him. We give back to God a portion of the good things he has given us. We give back to God first, and then we live on the ninth. It doesn't work the other way around. We don't use it all up and give him the leftovers. Or so our God requires of us. So how can this principle play out in my everyday life? The one in ten man that returned received an extra something from God in his life. I wonder if we receive that because he was thankful first. He returned, the nine went on their way as they were told to do. He obviously had a thankful, generous spirit. A humble thankfulness. So how can that happen for me? Because I'm not always I'm not often thankful. Especially in today's world when we're crowded out by media stories that convince us that the world is an awful place to be. We read it in the newspapers all the time. It's filled of disaster. It's filled with terror. It's filled with hurt. It's filled with pain. This is the world that you and I live in. Live in. When was the last time you turned on the news to hear? Folks, not one person is at risk of homelessness this morning. Not one person went without a bed last night. There was not one accident on our country roads this week. Because they're not headline grabbing. We are surrounded by news that draws us into the negative. How can we, in today's world, turn this mantra around? How can I be unlike what I hear and see on the news? How can we together say, let not the spirit of negativity live in my life? And together, as a church, how can we not let the spirit of negativity reign. Because when we allow that to happen, we're opening the door to Satan. And he's loving it. He's, he's stepped inside the door and he's enjoying the party. How can we, as Paul says, give thanks in all circumstances? For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God's will for us is that we give thanks. And that's quite a different spin on thankfulness, I think. 
An 18th century preacher named Matthew Henry, whose commentary and searching of the Bible remains among the most popular of all time, was once accosted and robbed by thieves whilst living in London. And he writes about this nasty experience. And this is what he says. Let me be thankful first because I was never robbed before. Second, because although they took my purse, they did not take my life. Third, because although they took my all, it was not much. And fourth, because it was I who was robbed, not I who robbed. What a wonderful way to look at that experience. Well, you may already have the spirit of thankfulness alive and well in your life. And if you do, you are a blessed person. And we do meet those people, don't we? They're so thankful. All praise to Jesus. All the time. If you are one of those people, how, do you, how can you model that for someone else today? And if we're not one of those people, naturally, how can we aspire to even be one-tenth better in that space? When we leave here today, can I determine to be one-tenth more thankful than when I arrived? Because we have got so much to be thankful for. Amen? We need to be the ones who demonstrate thankfulness and gratitude and point it out to others. We need to be the ones who return with an attitude of gratitude. We need to be the positive ones. We are the hope-filled people in this room. We are the hope-filled people in the world because we have Jesus. And so this morning I thought that together we might practice this. So I'm going to ask you to be nice and comfortable. I right, can do some shoulder rolls if you like. Put your feet flat on the floor. Close your eyes. Unless, of course, you might drift off to somewhere. And if you do, I do hope it's a lovely place that you've gone to. <laughs> and Elliot is going to again read that scripture for us, verse by a couple of verses. And then we're just going to reflect on that verse. In the way that Matthew Henry was, about, was about, um, able to reflect on his circumstance through that infident incidence of him being with God. So I want you to quiet your inner thoughts. And let's spend these moments together praying, pressing into Jesus. While he was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. Thank you, God, that you come to those in-between places, those we fail to notice or those we fear. Thank you for being in the spaces we try to pretend are not there. Thank you that you are always paying attention to us. Help us to pay attention to others more. As he entered a village, ten leprous men who stood at a distance met him, and they raised their voice, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Thank you, God, that you come to us in Jesus. Thank you for coming in the most valuable way possible, in human skin. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. When he saw them. For seeing 
us, God, we give you thanks. Thank you for seeing what we try to hide, for seeing our hurt and fear, for enjoying our joy and our humour. Thank you for seeing this broken world in all its beauty, and that includes me. And as they were going, they were cleansed. That healing happens when we are together as one worshipping you, God, we praise you. That healing happens when we are doing things for you, God, we praise you. Thank you that together we are stronger than on our own. We are stronger together when we are alone. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. Praise you, God, for the ones who turned back. Thank you for all the people in my life that remind me who you are and who speak your name over me, who continue to point to you as the giver of everything good and remind me that you are real. Thank you, God, that you give us the opportunity always to turn around and run back to you. He fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Was no one found to return to give glory to God? except the sparrow. Thank you, Jesus, that people who are so different from us come to teach us so much about you and what it is to love like you. And he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. From all the things we've been healed, and gone in our way that we fail to even notice, we give you thanks today. For the times you've saved us from hurts, the times we may have been in danger but never knew it, the way you regenerate our minds and bodies, but especially God, we thank you for the way you renew our soul. The scriptures remind us that your mercies are new every morning and with you there is always a fresh start that comes with a new day. We thank you. Amen. Today let us be the ones, the thankful ones who share hope. Remember that we only have this hope because of Jesus' death on the cross for us. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of God. We're going to listen to a lovely song. You may or may not be familiar with it. It's a beautiful song where the writer just says, thank you, Jesus, for the blood of God. If you'd like to spend some time in prayer this morning, you know how to do that for you. You can sit in your seat. You can come and kneel here at the front. You can ask for someone to pray with you. That is what we need. But let's just spend these next few minutes Soaking in these words as well. And at the end of the song, there's a very familiar few lines that I'd like us all to sing together. Thanks, Angie. I was lost, I was blind, I 
We are people of gratitude, even though we don't express it often enough. At the cross, you paid a debt that we could never hope to repay. And for that, we are faithful. Today, God, remind us that we have a story of hope within our lives to share to others. May they realise in us that we have a God who is more powerful than any of the things we see happening around us. More generous than any of the ways that we could ever be. And more loving in comparison to the way we think about love. Let us, God, be people of thanks and hope today. Let not the spirit of negativity reign in my life, in our lives, in the life of this Salvation Army, in the life of our church, in the life of the world. Let us, as God's people today, be the one, the thankful one, that return to praise your name. This is our prayer today, Lord Jesus, and we pray it in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to finish uh, with another song. You'll know this one. 10,000 reasons there are, and more. There are 10,000 reasons and more. So please stand and let's finish worship with this song this morning.
Thank you. 